So what are you planning to do this uh, Thursday, October 27th in the evening? If you're anywhere in the neighborhood, come on by and let's talk about some really controversial ideas that can change the world. So there are going to be some dramatic surprises, but don't be surprised if the person you thought was the best of the best turns out to be the worst of the worst. And don't be surprised if the person you thought was the worst of the worst turns out to be the best of the best, not only in politics, not only in, in, in the media, in, in everyday life. So the one thing we can be sure of is that there are going to be surprises. And that's good. Rabbi Manis Friedman, hello. Thank God it's Tuesday. And what a hat. What a amazing. Oh yeah, it's from Moscow. <laughs> Are you in Moscow? <laughs> Feels like. <laughs> it's cold like Moscow. It's um, not cold enough for me, but I like it just a tiny bit colder, but it's okay. It's uh, the, the weather is not according to Anna, so it's all right. <laughs> a, little, a little for everybody. Yeah. Robert Friedman, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for allocating this time um, to give us wisdom um, and insights into so many things that matter today and um, the life we live in is not a simple one at the moment. Um, however, the topic that I would like to raise today is um, about emotions. I mean, if you look into your, I, I think that everybody's favorite feature in the phone is those little emojis which express our feelings. So we have an emoji for absolutely every feeling that a person can possibly have. And this is how we express ourselves. This is how we relate to life. This is how we relate to each other. And this is all that life became about um, lately or for a while now is about the feelings that one has. And that is what identifies us, our lives um, and everything we do. So of course, uh, especially lately, we have gone through a roller coaster of emotions or are still going through a roller coaster of emotions, um, anger, despair, uncertainty, um, fears, uh, so much. I mean, there's negative, there's positive, but uh, especially the negative ones are a little bit overtaking the world because of the state of the world. So of course, I think it would be very, very important to discuss today how to best deal with feelings, emotions that we are experiencing these days. You know, some people wear their emotions on their face. Whatever they're feeling, you see it right away on their face without being very perceptive. Of course, if you're perceptive, you can see. But you don't have to be perceptive because they wear their emotions on the surface. That's that's a lack of, of maturity, a lack of wisdom. It's uh, the, the emotions are a little too artificial, too superficial, too much, too much on the surface. They don't go very deep. It's the deep emotions that an emo emoji can't show. Those are the ones that we need to take seriously. And they're also positive and negative. So, um, listening to you speak Russian, I wish I had learned Russian from my mother because, you know, they say that people who speak with a British accent sound intelligent. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it sounds sophisticated, but Russian has a much deeper resonance. Anything you say in Russian is a little more uh, impressive because you're assuming that Russians don't talk nonsense. <laughs> assuming, assuming. <laughs> Somebody once told me that when they hear Russian, they always think it's uh, someone is cursing somebody out, someone is fighting with somebody. It sounds very aggressive. 
No, it sounds very sub substantive. This is not fluff talk. This is real talk. Anyway, so um, what do we do with the emotions that an emoji can't properly display? Those are the serious ones. Those are those are the ones that don't just come and go. The ones that you see immediately on the face, 10 minutes later, it's, it's been exchanged with some other feeling and they just flit in and out. <clears throat> the one thing we need to be really uh, aware of today, the fear and the uncertainty I mean, some people are taking full advantage of it. Making sure that we are uncertain and fearful. But we know, we knew already, and we've been talking about this for two years. You can't, you can't uh, predict what's going to happen from today to tomorrow. So everything in life has now become like the weather. You cannot predict it. <laughs> so stop trying. <clears throat> so the fact that we can't predict it is not frightening. And it's not a failure and it's not a weakness on our part. The world is going through some adjustments, some uh, realignment. And, and there is no way of knowing what's going to be tomorrow. The only question is optimistic or pessimistic? Well, if that's your choice, I think optimistic is a little more fun, <laughs> at least for most people. So there are going to be some dramatic surprises. They're, they're happening, it's unbelievable. But don't be surprised if the person you thought was the best of the best turns out to be the worst of the worst. And don't be surprised if the person you thought was the worst of the worst turns out to be the best of the best. Not only in politics, not only in, in, in the media, in, in everyday life. So the one thing we can be sure of is that there are going to be surprises. And that's good. That's good. There, there are so many people who hate surprises <laughs> because they're so uncertain. You never know what's on the other side. <laughs> right. So the real question is not, how is it going to happen? The question is, is it going to be good or God forbid not? <clears throat> For that, the answer is absolutely it is going to be good. So now the surprise is not so scary. Maybe now you can enjoy the surprise. Because the point is, the world is getting better. But how it's going to happen? Wow. <laughs> In a way that you never would have predicted. So now it's a double, a double uh, enjoyment. It's getting good and full of surprises. So it's like, you know, you're going to have a birthday party. <laughs> they surprise you with where and how and who comes. And so the world is definitely uh, being sifted. You know, the farmers, when they're when they're cleaning up the wheat, they have this uh, sieve. It's a big um, a flat surface. They put the, the wheat on it and they throw it up in the air. The wind carries away the leaves and the junk and the, the heavier uh, seeds, the grain, falls back into the net. That's what's happening. So we're being tossed in the air, <laughs> which is a little unsettling. But the result is that the bad stuff blows away and the good stuff stays. 
Want to see a really, really nice poster? Isn't that gorgeous? But the topic in which we're going to discuss is even more exciting, more controversial, and more life-changing. Does God need us? Do we need Him? Of course we need Him. And of course He needs us. Otherwise, it's not a relationship. But what does that mean? How do you combine the two? Which one comes first? And how do we explain it all? Well, that's what we'll talk about. So if you're in the neighborhood, or if you want to get to the neighborhood for the evening on the 27th, by all means, come on by and let's, let's make a difference in the world.